Hello, welcome to another Totalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Northland Road. It's 14 by 20, I'm pretty sure, fairly large for me, fairly large size. Um, and uh, yeah, Northland Road, I live in the north, it's called Northland up here, and it's kind of a typical sort of scene. Um, I had it interestingly i've had it I've had it composited for a while. I've just been kind of you know waiting for a good time to do it and uh that was uh, last weekend and it, it went pretty well in fact, one of the things that I think was is defining of this painting is there was a lot of very cool modulations in color um so much though so, so that I decided just to leave it all as his first pass. I'm not going to get back in and do anything else to it. Um, I'm tempted though, very tempted, especially in these dark trees I'm doing now. You'll see there's some cool modulations there, but um, the thing that can happen is when you put that painting back up on the easel, uh, you won't just, most likely, you won't just do the thing that you uh, wanted to do, that you think you need to do. Um, you're going to do a bunch more stuff, and then uh, you, uh, as soon as you've lost sight, kind of, uh, of how it was and what was cool, and you think you're improving it, you know, a lot of times. Um, in fact, I was glancing through the uh, painter, uh, the painterly approach book by Bob Rome, which I think is an excellent book, and he was. Um, I just out of the corner of my eye saw uh, uh, something that he said there, and he was saying that. Uh, he was just talking about this principle that I'm talking about right now, which is, you know, you have these um, big shapes with some nice modulations, and it's really, uh, really common to think, oh, I'm going to add a bunch more stuff to that and make it even better. But most of the time, it doesn't really make it better. Some, sometimes, maybe, it depends. Um, it really depends on your state of mind. Are you in your right mind? <laughs> Are you, can you be trusted? Can you trust yourself not to ruin the good stuff that was there and just add that one or two notes? And uh, there are times, I mean, especially if I'm quite fond of the passage or the shape and the color modulations in it, um, as I am in, in this painting. Um, yeah, I'm not going to put it back on the easel, even though I think a couple more dots in some of those trees might be good. You know, um, I don't think I will do it. Uh, now, it was a bit of a... Painting larger is always a bit more of a challenge for me. One of the things I did was, uh, in this sky here, I'm using a number 8 brush, uh, whereas, you know, a lot of times in my smaller stuff, I'd be using a 4. So it's twice as big, which is good, because, you know, you don't want your sky filled with a bunch of tiny little strokes. Uh, generally, when I move down into landscape portion, though, things are a little tighter and... Um, by tighter, I mean the areas are smaller, you know. Uh, it doesn't really make sense for me to try and do that with an 8. Um, I could do it with a 6, depending on how loose it is. Here, I had things I wanted to um, to work out and do, and uh, I did them, and I used a 4. I'm pretty sure I used a 4. We'll see when we get there, which is not that far off. Um, so... Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to, to lay on you. You know I've talked about it before, and I'll keep talking about it, because uh, I have to, you know, rein myself in. And uh, it, I, I, don't, yeah, I always remember I have some uh, videos from uh, Richard Schmidt, which is a great series he did that were based on the four seasons, and they're, they're somewhere in a box in the garage. I've got to find it dig it out and watch him again. It was so great. But, you know, he, at the point of doing these videos, had been painting for 30-something years. And he w overworked a painting, you know. Or or he just, he said so many times, I lose that fresh, immediate quality. And uh, we all do that. We're all challenged by that. So um, don't think I'm, like, talking down to you or nothing. I'm basically telling myself to. Um, and it's good when I remember to do that. Um, although there, that voice is always still present in my head, like, what about those trees, man? You could have added a few more notes there. And sometimes, uh, maybe, you know, way on down the road, uh, you know, when you've lived with the painting for a while, you might have that restraint 
Um, and and when I do have to put a painting back up on the easel, I always, you know, it's it, I don't put a note there saying stop, stop yourself, just do the thing you need to do. Um, I don't do that, but I am always telling myself that because uh, so many paintings have got overworked. Especially when I started getting really into dry brushing, which I don't do that much anymore, but um, when I first uh, come across it was a lovely way of adding like a transition to a shape, you know, with the, uh, you can dry brush in, of course you have to dry brush over a painting that's dry with a brush that's got just a little bit of paint into it in it. And what I found is that I wouldn't, wasn't able to stop, I would just dry brush everything and then sort of, I won't say I ruined the painting because a lot of times it's still a saleable painting, it's still attractive, but you know what you lost and knowing what you lost um, is always, it's, it's just not a great feeling. I, I, it's much better actually so we got what well, we got we got competing feelings right we got the feeling that I'll have when I look at this painting like oh I could have added those few dots in the trees and that would have been lighter and brighter a little bit and I'm worried they're too dark and I I always worry my paintings too dark and probably because you know it is <laughs> But, you know, whatever, uh, I paint the way I, I can, I, I do the best I can um, with all of the, um, with all the goals that I'm trying to accomplish with my painting, you know, and, uh, pardon me, usually the main goal is just to get across a certain feeling or quality, and uh, if it's too light and too bright, I really can't pull that off, so that's one of the reasons things are dark, but that said, I don't need it to be any darker than it needs to be. I certainly don't, <clears throat> and um, where you have an area, a lot of times too, and I'll pa pass this on to you before, but I don't, we know I was getting the new members here. You you probably have really good lighting in your painting area. It's it's good to remember that most people's homes the lighting won't be that bright. So you could have a bunch of amazing color modulations and interesting brush fracture, and it's all really dark on dark and you can see it in your lighted studio area but the second you get that into someone's home it's just going to show up like a dark shape so it's good to be aware of that you know like actually you can see I'm doing that right now I've had my dark uh, black shapes but I'm coming into it with my next dark and uh, I just hit this painting with some liquid yesterday and um, there is a pretty good spread between the darkest darks and the next dark color which is good because I don't want to um, and take the chance of putting it up on the easel. Um, I'm trying to uh, more and more just let things be, um, leave them alone, you know. Um, the other thing I've been getting into is just enjoying immediate uh, brushwork that's not too, that doesn't have too much artifice, I guess if that makes sense. Like it's not too precious, it's just a bit sketchy. Um, and, and to me, sketchy sort of has a negative connotation, but I mean that in a in a positive way. It's like you were working things out, you slapped down some color, and it looks nice. And uh, nine times out of ten, I'll just go through and modify that and put other colors on top, and a lot of those cool strokes just disappear. But um, in fact, in um, uh, it's going to be a recent, it's going to be a, a video coming up, you know, I'm doing something, I, I kind of say I'm doing my Van Gogh thing. This is not to say that my painting looks a thing like Van Gogh, but what I mean is that if you look at his work, um, especially his mature work, there's lots of bold, direct strokes with, with brilliant um, color, and it's the right color, and he's a great example of of getting the color down and leaving it alone and not messing with it. Um, so he's always one of the guys that's in my head, you know, saying, well, you know, look, this looked good. And um, there was a painting where I just totally let myself go um, in that regard. And I do like the painting quite a lot. I'm, um, it's a bit difficult sometimes when things are in the drying rack um, because, you know, things go matte. And you really can't tell how brilliant the color is until you get, you know, get it coated with some liquid or... Or, or oil it out with some um, linseed oil or something. Um, but, uh, except I, I have the memory, and of course I have a video, you know. Um, but you'll see that one coming up, and I'd be interested to see what you think of that. And, and actually, this painting has a bit of that too. It's not as obvious, but 
I'm just laying down the color, I'm leaving it alone, I'm not piling other bits on top. I'm really just trying to respect um, hitting the right color, getting the expressive brushwork in there, and then moving on. It's, it's ten times more valuable than overworking stuff. And uh, funny enough, uh, one of my my best friends here is um, a carver, um, and uh, <laughs> well, he doesn't always just carve. A lot of times he uses a rasp or he uses sandpaper. I mean, and he's working on something called a patu, which is sort of a, a Maori um, kind of a weapon. It's like a paddle that you can use for for you know as a kind of crudel or club, except it's small and hand size. But they they have a really lovely form to it and a really lovely taper and uh, I was saying well that's nice you know and it looks good and and I don't remember what else I said he says yeah well it's not going to take me four hours <laughs> this painting in the members area live is four hours and um, it's going to be four hours uh, you know I'm not planning on painting on it anymore now there was a bunch of planning that went into it color mixing other things you could say all together after everything that was said and done it's an eight hour painting okay <clears throat> and you might think well geez why are you selling it for X I don't know what I'm selling this for yet but X it'll be X it won't be you know um, 20 bucks an hour or something like that because well it's pretty simple um, I'm only going to be able to get so many paintings like this done in a year um, I'm not a, a machine, I'm an artist, you know, and it's a process. So, uh, anyway, that's a topic, uh, a separate topic, which I have discussed before, but not really what I want to touch on now. What I want to touch on now is that for painting, um, an immediate expressive statement done while you were in a fairly uh, um, lucid state of consciousness is what you want okay working on this uh, pecking away at it turning everything into uh, rice grain like strokes you know there's a place for paintings like that but they're not the kind of paintings I want to do I want to convey emotion and I want to convey um, the scene and the beautiful colors and I want someone to look at it and go wow that's that's really cool it's beautiful and uh, I like that and I want to live with that in my house. I want to put that above my sofa and look at it every day after work and while I'm having a nice glass of wine and um, just enjoy it. Enjoy the way it makes me feel, right? So you really can't get that across uh, too well um, if you're overworking things, you're, you're pounding strokes on top of strokes um, with no end. Oh, I need to pause here, but I'll be right back. Yeah, sorry about that. The the wife just uh, came home and the dog is, you know, going to go crazy. You don't need to hear all that enthusiasm. Yep. Anyway, that's pretty much what I had to say. And I wanted to share this painting with you. I'm pretty happy with it. And I uh, uh, can't wait to pop it in a frame. I think I think this will definitely benefit from a frame. Um, whoa. Oh, sorry, I don't know what that was. Things went black for a minute. Uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, that's so much sky there. And one of the things I contemplated was making those trees a bit bigger in the landscape. But I feel I got a pretty good balance. It's about a 50-50 balance. And uh, um, one of the things I did here in this painting I think is pretty good is I have the, um, like in the reference, all those mountains and hills in the back there, or hills, um, they're much darker so I was pretty successful at just knocking those back and I can see lots of little things that I'd like to do but as I said I've decided just to leave it alone and hopefully you agree that uh, that was a good move um, you can weigh in in the comments in fact I love comments uh, so much please uh, don't stop yourself um, and thank you so much for getting to this part of the video and for watching my videos. Really appreciate it. Check this painting out in the members area. It'll take you a little while to get through it, but um, yeah, you can leave the tab open, watch a little bit here and there. Anyway, until they come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself and your family, all your loved ones. Be patient with your enemies, and um, don't try not to have any enemies, of course. Um, and uh, take good care. Stay out of trouble.